It's... Are you serious? Or have you just come to look? It doesn't matter. Either way, you'll make your own decisions. David Macmillan here. Forty years in smuggling, man and boy. Uh, successful? Well, successful is that no one would know. Successful is that you got in when you saw the time was right. That you got out after three years before the weakness of those who you had no choice but to bring on board brought you down. By that gold standard, no, not successful. But I succeeded. My operations worked. I got my money and kept everyone safe, mostly. But there was not a day when I didn't learn. I walked into trouble just to figure a way out. And let me tell you this, the odds are against you. You'll have, you'll have to be better than you are now. You know that. But first, I'll have to tell you lesson one. You don't even think right. You have most things backwards. Information gets scrambled by your dreams. You know the odds are against you, and still you think, just about everything I've said doesn't apply to you. You're, you're exceptional, one of a kind. And maybe you are. Who's your favorite criminal? The big cartel bosses like uh, Pablo, Emilio, Escobar, or the lone wolves? Frank Abagnale Jr., um, played by DiCaprio and Catch Me If You Can. Pablo really had time to enjoy his money and spent his last years paranoid and hiding, as did Mexico's Shorty Guzman. Young Frank certainly had moments of a uh, high life, but they were brief, and as best I can tell, I doubt that even in his best years combined... He netted more than $100,000. That's less than he'd make if he'd held a steady job. Um, but that's con men for you. Great to know, but never to do business with. Do you see yourself as De Niro in heat, not taking the advice to walk away in 30 seconds flat when you see the heat, or real-life John Dillinger, who believed much the same thing. Both died by gunfire. Bob following Hollywood ending rules, while Dillinger was simply betrayed. I'll go for Willie Sutton, who, when asked why he robbed banks, replied, because that's where the money is. Crime is of its time. In racketeering, there are golden ages, bootlegging in the U.S. in the 1920s, bank robbery in the 1960s and 70s, narcotics from 1980 to 1999, party over. From 2004 until 2018, computer-based fraud and extortion. And today, as we speak, well, we'll come to that. But this is lesson one, the mindset. If you want to step out of your life and dive deep into successful crime, you'll need to look at the world differently. At an early age, all you wanted to do was please your parents. Uh, then you realize that will never happen. And if it did, you'd have no life. So you then saw you'd have to get away from them. For a while, you thought you'd have a chance of getting that dream job, but found that people in dream job companies are all like squabbling brothers and sisters. And what's worse, the boss will turn out to be a master criminal himself. Which raises a major point here. Are the big successful companies all peachy sunshine or simply ruthless corporations who dance from one jurisdiction to another where the law lets them get away with it? If the big pharmaceutical companies using smooth, white-coat Hollywood doctors as fronts while testing their iffy discoveries in poor African countries where the law is weak, then 
who is a criminal? If the international banks channel arms payments through Macau or those massive personal data vacuum pumps like Google and Facebook park their profits in Caribbean islands, does that mean there are no real ethics other than don't get caught? You've got a long way to go if you're even asking yourself such things. Let me save you as much time as possible here. Clear the mind. There are 7.9 billion people in the world. For most of these people, finding food, shelter, water and clothing takes all of their time. Of the rest, among the rich world, we are rewarded with a comfortable place to live, a little downtime, and limited vacations, uh, and but soon loaded with obligations of family, friends, and modest ambitions that mean generating income for our bosses. Sure, we can spend 30 years building up enough to retire, but not have more than 15 healthy years to enjoy it. And don't envy the bosses. They might have a hundred million by midlife, but are so tangled in keeping the wheels turning and the competition at bay, they too have less time than you think. Will a short and successful life of crime cut through all that? Can you get your 100 million in under five years and spend it free of investigation and attack? Well, let's find out. It is said with some truth that psychopaths make successful business people. So just go full psycho? Uh, no, they mean that a disregard for others' well-being and a sheer determination are shared characteristics of uh, successful businessmen and psychos. Here's the flaw in that easy solution. Psychopaths have major blind spots they often don't see danger coming because they are so dismissive of everyone else they lose the ability to read them. Besides, being a psychopath is very draining and unpleasant. Personally, I see them immediately, so I stand aside to let them munch their way through others. When it comes to handling psychopaths, misdirect them while remaining forgettable. Do not try to manipulate them. Their carnivore instincts will make them snap at you. Educational to watch, unwise to play. Back to becoming a master criminal. I'm not recommending this, but if I were 25 again, I'd certainly want to know. Clear your mind. People. All of us are at the mercy of our evolution. Eat, fuck, kill, as the T-shirt hopefully proclaims. But there is worse. We are not allowed to know what our own minds think, and not in words anyway. The parts of our mind that do the talking and the other department that does the listening are like little calculators of their own, walled off from that uh, creature inside who really calls the shots. What you do and see will be processed in complete secrecy from your conscious self. The words people say are nothing more than a limited press conference screened from the dark workings of the governments of their minds. I can demonstrate the truth of that, but this is not some nature documentary. There's no time for that. You know it is true. Let's move on. Strip away the distractions and toys in your life and walk back into your existence with no more than an overnight bag. You will have a plan for your crime. Don't worry. Don't worry what it is for now. But don't even think of it as a crime. It is simply something you want to get done, legal or not. If you can do it without any help, well, wonderful. But we live in a human world, so even getting paid usually requires another human to give it to you. 
You won't necessarily tell them that you want their help, but you will want them to do something. Every interaction with them has only one purpose, to get them to do what you want. Once identified, you'll notice they make sounds and movements. Don't worry about the content of their words. The less you say, the more they will like and trust you. As to your words and gestures, do not leave them with any useful information. Only the sense that they like you. You will have no opinions on the world. All that you will say will be the effect of doors you open for them and through which you will guide them to do your bidding. And that uh, last 90 seconds is enough for today. Uh, coming in the series, this master class in criminal class will be uh, people, will you need them, contacts, how to get them, turnaround time, the first consideration between legal and illegal, and a dozen more. And some episodes for patrons only, as I can't risk uploading certain texts to the search engines. <laughs> the best crimes for today those that won't be understood as crimes for another five years. How are you getting along with that overnight bag? No need for the extra socks. You can buy and throw away at uh, five dollars for five. Oh, what, worried about the uh, carbon offset? Geez, you've got a long way to go. Lesson two, soon.